Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Seymour EA9 HMI series panel FTP file transfer protocol. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be the links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. And FTP it stands for File Transfer Protocol and it's a standard network protocol used to transfer computer files between a client and a server on a computer network. So that's basically the definition of FTP. And the Seymour um, EA9 HMI panel can actually use it, use FTP through the Ethernet port and it can be act as a, a client or it can act as a server. Now a client can send and receive files um, to an FTP server site and but we'll need an FTP server already set up on the network to use this feature so an example of that would be like a web server and you can actually transfer files from your Seymour to that web server now what we're going to be doing is setting up the Seymour uh, FTP server so we can retrieve data from the uh, client that we're going to use as a browser and then uh, on the command prompt and use FTP. So let's uh, first of all look at our program that we had last time. Um, we're using the exact same one and what we're going to do, this is my data logging screen, and what we'll do is take a look at your setup and then we'll go to the panel network. Now we can also get to the panel network by going into the function and then going into um, our panel network here and we can see first of all our Ethernet port. So Let's go, uh, let's go through this way, set up, panel network, and we'll look at our Ethernet port, and we have to make sure this is set up correctly. So we have an IP address here, we've set it for 192.168.1.18, our subset mask, and our default gateway. The default gateway will allow this Seymour then talk to the um, internet. Then we have a DNS server, and we're not using this right now but for the FTP however DNS server will allow you to write a server name and it can look up names so we're going to use the Google DNS server at 8888 and the alternative DNS server at 8844 so that is our Ethernet settings then we go to our FTP service and we ensure that the um, Exclude or execute panel FTP server uh, server service is activated or click click like it is. We'll leave the D port number as 21, and we'll use the user restrictions as 10. So we can have 10 con uh, concurrent operators looking at our Seymour panel. Then our account, we're going to use account and password. Our accounts can be ACC, and the password will be ACCA. So that is our account and it's always good to have a password on that account so make sure that we don't have anyone um, that's not authorized getting that information. So that is our um, what we have to do for our FTP service. Just hit OK and now what we can do is we will look at our actual hardware that we have. So. From last time you can see that here's our here's my Seymour and we have our USB connector with our um, USB uh, drive on it which is actually logging the data into that USB stick so let's transfer this information over after we set our FTP service up Ethernet transfer This only takes a couple of minutes and then here we go. We'll hit OK. We'll close that for now. And remember, this is our FTP service is 192.168.1.118. And we'll hit close. Okay, and as always, we have our Seymour here talking to my uh, Do More simulator 
from the Do More Designer software, and which is right here. And this is my, my data logging that we're logging the um, information from. So MHR 500, 501, and 502. So then, so we're logging here. And if we look at our actual simulation, this is what it is here. So this is my logging data that I'm playing around with here, as well as my um, buttons that I'm pressing or not pressing. Okay. So that's from a, a previous uh, uh, post that we did on data logging. So once we have that information in, next thing to do is actually we will call up a uh, Internet Explorer. And with Internet Explorer, what we'll do is look at FTP and we will um, we will bring the information in using FTP. So at the command prompt, we'll use FTP colon two backslash and then our address that we're going to 192.168.1.18. And the first thing it will do is ask us for our username, which will be ACC and our password ACCA and we'll hit log on. All right. We're going to allow access. There we go. So now here's my uh, root directory and this is at the address. So we're into our FTP now and we can look at the USB uh, pen memory. Then we can look at our log and here are our log files that we have on our um, USB drive. So we can then take a look at those and we can download those um, at will. We right click in and we can save target as. We can also go into that particular log and it will show us all the information. Okay. So that is um, using web browser as a client to get my FTP. Now the other thing we can do is actually use a command prompt and uh, here's my command prompt here and with this I can now um, go in and we can type in FTP and that changes my uh, cursor to FTP. We will then uh, change our directory so CD, it will it'll ask us, oh, um, we have to open that uh, port first, so open. And then our address, 192.168.1.18. It will then ask me for my user, which will be ACC. It will ask you for my password, ACCA, enter. And now it tells me that I'm logged in. Now, once I'm logged in, I can actually then hit CD for change directory. And then I'll ask you for my remote directory, which in our case will be backslash USB pen underscore memory and then backslash log. There we go. And it tells me that tells me that the command was successful. Then what I can do is I can then look at uh, their directory and I can see those files that I have, which are the four files. Then what I can do is I can say multiple get, which is M G E T. And we'll use a star for any, any file that's on that directory dot TXT for text. What this will do is give me a prompt. So it's asking me if I want the first one, I'll answer yes. And now it downloads it. Then it's asking me if I want the second one, I'll say yes. Again, it downloads it third. And then the fourth one, yes. So then it's transferring those, those uh, files back down to me. So that's how I can get multiple files on this. So let, then at the end of our session, we can type quit. And then that ends our session on our command prompt. So let's close that down and we can close that down. And what we can also do is create a batch file. In a batch file, we can automate a lot of these different commands that we have. 
So here's my batch file. I'm just going to put edit and I'll bring that over so we can actually see the actual file. So here we have echo off. It's asking for a username and password. It's going to put in the ACC. It's going to put in ACCA. And all the time it's going to write to this FTP command data file. Then we're going to enter binary mode. We're going to change our directory to the log. It's, we're going to put the, we're going to remove the prompts. So we're not going to prompt at all, uh, to ask for the file or not. Then we're going to, um, go down here and we're going to get all the text files that we have. Once we have that complete, we're going to end. And this is my, uh, address that we're going to here. So that is my, and then we're going to delete the command of the FTP data file that we have. So that is my batch file that I'm going to run. So let's remove that down. And all we do is we would have a scheduler or something to actually create, uh, we have a scheduler to actually execute this on a, on a daily basis or whenever we want to execute this batch file. And what this will do will automatically bring in those um, values for us. So if we double click on this, it will actually start running my script and my script brings those four different values all in and then closes it. So once again, we see here that my uh, four different files are automatically then saved onto my hard drive. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you have, if you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.